Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Time Travel. Now today, we're going to be starting another little mini-series here on the Time Travel video series. And this is very similar to what we did with the Microsoft Plus um, line of products. As you may remember, we took a look at Microsoft Plus for Windows 95, 98, and for Windows XP. That was um, probably uh, earlier in the year. But now... I've decided to do that with the Microsoft Entertainment Packs. And these were basically packs of games that Microsoft made to sort of entertain people while they were using their computers. You know, sort of things that, you know, you were uh, at your job um, in the office and you kind of had a bit of downtime or you were on your break and you wanted something to do and you didn't want to just sit around and, and do nothing. And they basically made these packs for those kind of people. And they uh, included a lot of games. They made four separate packs uh, in the original line. And then at the very end, they released the Best Of Pack, which took all the best games from the original four and brought it into one pack that you could buy, probably for the same amount of money. Now, these were not uh, included with Windows 3. And that's, by the way, these were uh, uh, all designed to run on the Windows 3.0 and 3.1 platform. Um, and what was kind of odd about them for this time is because these needed um, a Windows installation to work properly. And, you know, people were used to games running under MS-DOS uh, at this time. You know, this was released, um, the first pack that we're going to be taking a look at in this video, was released in 1989. So just, you know, Windows was just getting its way out, you know, into the hands of consumers. And people were used to using MS-DOS and they were used to running games under MS-DOS, so um, this was kind of weird in, in that sense, as you needed Windows for it to work properly, but it was still very successful. It sold more than 500,000 copies, which was a lot for that time, um, and uh, the actual boxes that these games came in, uh, they had slogans like, no more boring coffee breaks, and only a few minutes between meetings, get in a quick game of Coat Sky, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, but that was one of the games um, in the packs, and uh, this marketing obviously was very successful, and uh, a magazine by the name of Computer Gaming World um, actually called it the Gorillas of the Gaming Light Jungle, that's an actual quote from the magazine that, uh, that called it, so obviously this was uh, kind of a new thing, this was something that Microsoft didn't really do at the time, you know, they were just getting windows out to people, but to kind of make Windows successful, I'm guessing, they decided to do this. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at the first pack today. Now, I'm just going to be honest, I've never played any of these games personally. Um, so I'm not, this is going to be my, my first time doing this, so you guys are probably going to laugh at how I don't really know how to do any of this. But um, I'm I'm not going to spend that much time, you know, how, how I always... How I always say when we have like a bunch to look at, I think I said the same thing in the um, Microsoft Plus videos. I'm not going to like spend an hour on like every single game, you know, going through each aspect. I'm just going to spend way too much time and make the video really boring. I'm actually going to be trying to fit two separate packs into one video. I don't know if that's going to work very well, but we're going to see how that works. Um, I may just end up making four separate videos, but we'll just see how that goes. So... But anyway, we are going to be doing this under Windows 95 because I can uh, have VMware tools installed and we can get, uh, you know, full 1080p resolution. If I did this under Windows 3.1, I don't think we could do that. So, that's what we're doing. Um, so, we're going to go in here. We're going to open up the 3.5 floppy A drive. And that's uh, what this came on at the time. So, I'm just going to show you what is on the CD. This is literally, or, or not CD, what's on uh, the floppy disk. Uh, this is what this is an image of what the box looks like for the uh, this is uh, the first pack by the way and this is an image of what this floppy disk guy looks like so if you were to go out and buy this in 1989 this is what you would be getting and so it comes with uh, these three different things it's 404 sorry not 404.86 kilobytes inside the uh, bin folder we have uh, a bunch of, I'm, I'm guessing these are all the files uh, for the installation, so I'm not going to mess with that. We're just going to run uh, the setup file here. 
and you see it it works perfectly fine under windows 95 i think it also uh this will also actually work under windows 98 and windows xp so if you um you want to do this and you don't want to deal uh, with uh, installing windows 95 uh, on uh, a virtual machine which i have uh, a tutorial on this by the way but if you have like an old windows xp machine laying around uh, you can do this and it would pr probably work just fine. Of course, I haven't tested it, but it was designed for Windows 3.1. So, but anyway, we're going to be, uh, so it, it's going to say that it's going to uh, install the entertainment pack into the following directory. So it's just C W E P. So we're going to click on continue and it's just going to copy everything. Now you can see how fast that the installation was. And that's probably because we were, uh, in a virtual machine and every, everything was virtualized, but it's also probably because it's from a floppy diskette. Uh, so it's done. We're gonna click on OK and we're gonna close out of that. So we're gonna go in here. We're gonna go into the C drive and WEP for Windows Entertainment Pack. And now uh, for Windows 3.1 users, you would be like if you bought this again. Like the whole point of this series is just, just kind of try to give you guys the feel of what you would be doing. Um, in that time frame. So if you're using Windows 3.1, you will be opening up the uh, program manager, which looks like this, if you've never seen that before. And you would be opening up um, a window that looks like this, not like this Windows 95 window right here. So, um, but it, 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 it's kind of the same thing. Just imagine that, that uh, this window looks like that uh, Windows 95 or that Windows 3.1 window. And the first game we're going to be taking a look at is Cruel, which is a card game, this one up here. And Cruel is a, let me just get the uh, info page up here, because I do want to actually know what the game is about before I start trying to figure out what it's about. Uh, Cruel is a uh, sort of card game. It's kind of like Solitaire, but it's a little bit different, and you can see here. Um, we'll just go into uh, About Cruel. So Cruel is by a man by the name of Ken Sykes, or Skykes, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, and it's copyrighted 1990, so, yeah, so uh, Cruel is basically, uh, it uses a, a standard deck of 52 playing cards, the aces are, are placed face up to act as the foundation, so that's uh, these up here, and what you have to do is you have to place all the cards on top of the foundation piles, in order from ace to king using an unlimited number of moves. So I'm guessing you just so you just have to does it matter what what type of card this? No, uh, okay, so it does. So you have to so yeah, just like I I did with this two here, you have to um move all the cards, try to get them all up on top of these aces. And there's no hints, I don't believe, so we can't uh or messages. So let's see if I try to put a three on top of here. Yeah, must play card onto same suit. So it is going to matter by color. So there's no other twos here. So I'm guessing you would press the deal button. Or maybe not. Oh yeah, so now it's going to deal an, uh, another two. So we're going to put that here. And then we're going to put the three. Oh yeah, we're going to put this three right here. And then we're going to take, if we can find a 4, we're going to put that right here. We're going to take a, a 5. Okay, so you can also, and this, this is something very useful, you can take a card, like let's say you have uh, this 8 down here. You can move it on top of this 9, and you can get a new card down here. So it's, basically, the point of the game is to take all the cards from down here, and move them, and like layer them out in those 4 different suits up here. So that's basically the point of the game. I'm not really going to try to you know, solve or, or like actually win the game because it would take like an hour probably. Um, so that's that's basically cruel. Now golf is another one of the card games in here, and I'm just gonna go back and golf right here. Let's see what th this is. Um, it's a card game where you have to uh, earn the least number of points, just like golf. You know, like the actual sport. So let's just actually go into the help file here. So we'll go how to play. So we'll go overview. So, golf is a challenging solitaire card game. Playing areas divide into three main regions. The seven stacks of cards, which is up here. I'm going to actually just draw this down like that. So, you have these up here. These, these are the seven uh, stacks of cards in the top of the playing area. The deck located in the bottom and the discard pile, which is this right here where the king is. 
And the object of the game is to play all the cards from the top, and you have to get them into the discard pile. So the, the top card... Okay, so when, when the game begins, the top card is face up on the discard pile. So that's this one right here. So you can play any card from the top of the stack down to the discard pile if its rank is either one higher or one lower than the rank on top of the, of the discard pile. For example, you can play you can play a 10 onto a 9 or a 4 onto a 5. There are two exceptions. Only a 2 can be played onto an ace, and no other card can be placed onto a king. All right, so I think I've gotten the point of this game after doing some... You know practice rounds um, basically what you do is you're supposed to start with this card down here and and try to get as many cards as you can from up here and move them down here and you can only use so you have a, like an ace down here what, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to uh, find a card that is greater than an ace or lower than an ace now the only problem is with an ace there is that one exception I think I was talking about earlier if you go in here, there is a, an exception with an ace. Only a two can be played onto an ace, and no card can be played onto a king. Um, so you, you can't play anything onto a king, and you can only play a two onto an ace. So, let's just start and see. I got, as you can see before, I got uh, only six cards left last round, so let's see if I can beat that this time. So, there's no two up here, so we have to click this card, and it's going to deal out a new one. So we have a jack. So now what I'm going to try to do is find a card that's either higher or lower than a jack. So that would be either a 10 or a queen. So there's a queen up here. So I can just click, let's do this one. And now I can find something higher or lower than a queen. That would be either a jack or a king. So there's nothing up here. That's a jack or a king. So I'm going to press this again. Now there's a three. So I'm, I'm going to do a four. And now I'm going to do five since a five is higher than a four. And then it's basically that same pattern. You have to be able to, you know, constantly be thinking of, okay, so what's higher than a five right now? It's a six. Um, and it doesn't really matter what time that you do it in. It's just, you, you mean, you can spend it like as much time as you want. You just want to see how many of these cards you can get down here. And, and you don't want to miss any moves either. So like if you, like if there's a six up here and you miss it, you're probably going to have already messed up. So you want to make sure that you, have gotten all the cards down here. So now we're gonna go to, okay, so it's a five again, so that's kind of useless. It's a king, uh, that's kind of useless because we can't play a king on, I just messed up because <laughs> there's a three. Actually, a three would be kind of useless. An ace is kind of useless right now. An eight will go um, nine, 10, and then we'll go back to nine, then eight, because again, you can do above and below, except for ace, because you can only do above. Um, we'll go eight. So now it's an eight again. Gee, these these were not shuffled very well. Um, ace. So we can play a two. And that's all we can do with that. Another two. So it's again useless. Seven. Um, useless. Eight. We can do seven. We'll go uh, nine. So we can go uh, ten. And we'll go uh, four, we can go five. King, that's useless. And seven, so yeah, that was kind of a bad round. There's 24 cards left, and that's basically because uh, we got all these bad deals. Like we got two, two eights in a row, um, two twos in a row, a bunch of kings so it's it's kind of based on what the actual computer is going to give you when, when it draws the cards and you you saw last round when it was down here it said six cards left so i, I did of course I, I i wasn't recording the whole thing so everything's better when it's not recording for some reason so yeah that is basically golf it's a pretty simple card game it's kind of like a more challenging solitaire and it, it's a pretty quick and simple game too it, it doesn't take that much time to learn either so uh, next, let's see what this idle win thing is. I'm going to go back to the wiki page and we'll see what that is. Um, this is actually uh, a screensaver program written by Brad Christian, or Christian. I think I'm, I'm, pro I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. So let's just launch this here. So I'm guessing we can choose a different uh, array of uh, different screensavers, and we can. So let's just see. Well, first let's let's just go to about. So. 
Uh, this is copyright to 1991. You can see uh, it is written by. Okay, so this time it says uh, his name is uh, Brad Ford C uh, Christian or Kristen. Uh, again, I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong. Sorry. Um, and so you just, I guess you just. Okay, so you can just press one of these and we'll press enter. So let's just see what this does. So blackness it just blacks out the screen. Um, so it, it's basically a bunch of uh, different types of screensavers. This one's kind of boring. Let's see what Dancing Lines is. Um, this one actually kind of looks like, I think this was in Windows XP. So I, I'm guessing they took some of these and brought them into Windows XP. Maybe it wasn't this exact same one, but we'll, we'll see. Um, so we have to just move the mouse to get out of it. We have Dropout, which uh, it says Screen Blocks Dropout. So... Okay, so it's going to actually drop out the blocks of the screen, so you can kind of see it's going to start taking them and kind of doing a pretty interesting effect. Um, it, that that kind of reminds me, I don't know what it was, there was that one, I think it was uh, in Microsoft Plus for Windows 98, where it would take uh, the, in, the um, entire desktop and like move it all around into that big 3D cube puzzle, and... So yeah, that, that's very cool. Uh, we have that. We, I, I keep forgetting we have to move the mouse out of it. Uh, we have Fireworks, which is, which is made by the same guy that actually made the program, which is cool. And it just makes uh, some fireworks. Now, again, it looks like it's down, like it's on the bottom, but again, this is a like huge 1080p display, so it's probably not going to... Yeah, so now not, now actually it's, it's, it's taking up the rest of the screen, which is cool. So it does actually, I guess... It, it, it can sort of work on a 1080p display. Um, that th That's one of the problems with most of these programs is that they were designed for the Windows 3.1 era and not many people from that era had like HD monitors and stuff. So yeah, so we'll see. Uh, so we have um, random, it'll just pick a random one. So you see it just picked uh, the, I think it was called Dropout. So we have that one, uh, it has Sh uh, shuffle which will divide and shuffle the screen which is basically the, this like little black box now you can see it, it uh, got rid of all of the icons uh, on the left side but it, it, it didn't get rid of any of the windows so it's basically just going to go through and um, go through and uh, do that now this this whole program kind of reminds me of uh, that after dark program which was kind of the same thing it was uh, a huge set of a bunch of different screen savers that um, would basically I mean I mean they weren't really the same design as this I'm not sure if that came out before or after this I think it came out like a, um, a bit before I'm, I'm not sure on that but yeah and basically if, if you're not sure what the purpose of a, a whole screen saver was basically the purpose of it was to save your uh, your screen from screen burn-in, which looks kind of like this. I'll put uh, another picture in. Um, basically, if you had one image um, projected, and now th these were on old CRT monitors, by the way. If you had one image um, constantly on th that monitor for a long period of time, it would actually burn itself into the monitor, and it wouldn't go away. And there was, I'm sure there, I, know, I actually don't think there is a way to, to make it, go away like once the screen was burnt in with that image it would just stay there um so that's kind of what uh, the whole screensaver concept was meant to uh, kind of prevent that so uh, it was you know programs like this that uh, instead of just made like you know boring screensavers which uh, just like change every like uh, change the image once in a while it would do cool things like this and um make it look like you're in the, the, the you're in space or whatever which is kind of cool um, this actually reminds me of uh, the flying windows thing, which was in Windows 98. Uh, so I guess they kind of took some um, inspiration from this and brought it into that. And we also have a uh, wipeout, which has various wipes and then random. So it just wipes down the screen like that. And it does uh, a random screen. So this is uh, that uh, same shuffle one, but it didn't get rid of the desktop icons and it's not like it. It, it, it's like not as many boxes as it was before and see uh, I just press enter again so it does um, a different form of like blackout every single time so there's a, a different one and I've probably moved the mouse again so see now it's gonna do it from the from the right side panning in 
I was gonna do from the left side. Yeah, that is basically this program. It's called Idle Wind, or sorry, Idle Wild again. Um, a very interesting little program. It doesn't come with that many different, uh, you know, different selections, but it was a pretty cool thing to include, to include, include, <laughs> interclude, in, to include um, in this Microsoft Entertainment Pack. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, next we have Pegged, which is a form of Peg Solitaire. And this is actually, it, it looks kind of like an old board game. I'm just pulling up the wiki page here. And so we'll just go to the help and uh, how to play. So we'll do overview. So it says right here, Peg is a game of logic uh, with origins dating back to the 19th century. No one knows for sure who invented the game, but several sources attribute its creation to a prisoner in the Bastille. The game was very popular throughout Europe in the 1800s, where it was known as Peg Solitaire because it was played by moving pegs in a wooden board. Peg is played in jumping a peg across any adjacent peg and then playing it, or and then placing it in an open peg on the other side. Only horizontal and vertical jumps are allowed. A peg has been jumped is a peg has been jumped is automatically removed from the board. So this already kind of looks like those things. Uh, if you've ever been to a uh, Cracker Barrel here in the U.S., they give you that like uh, like pegboard thing, and you have to like you know move around and get as many pegs out as you can. I'm, I'm not sure if they're the only restaurant that does that, but I'm thinking this kind of looks like that. You just have to drag this this way. Oh, no, no, okay, so it's only uh, horizontal and diagonal. So we'll move it up here. Oh no, actually, so there's okay. So here's the different arrangements here. We'll just do uh, a pyramid like this. So you're supposed to jump the pegs. So let's say like this. Does that work? Yeah, so that'll work. You have to go like that, and you just have to get as many as you can off of the board. So see, jumping diagonal like that doesn't work. But it said something about... Oh, only horizontal and vertical jumps are allowed. Okay, so in the one that I'm thinking of, you can jump like this. But no, you can only jump horizontal and vertical, so you can only jump like this. Okay, which kind of adds a bit of a challenge to it. So we'll jump like uh, this right here. Okay, game over. So we have one, two, three, four, five pegs left. And yeah, so it's basically you're supposed to get the least number of pegs, uh, kind of like the golf solitaire game. You're supposed to get the least number of cards up there. This is you're supposed to get the least number of pegs. So we'll just do a new game. And we're just gonna okay, so we're doing the, the the same pyramid one. Let's actually start from the let's just do this one. We'll go up. So that one's probably gonna be actually no, maybe not. This is probably not the best way to do this. Yeah, that was probably not the best way to do it. We just moved the whole pyramid up. Uh, we'll do we'll, we'll do new and we'll do uh, solitaire. So this is actually the most number of pegs, and we have not one or one not in the center. So another interesting challenge is start at the solitaire level and jump pegs with the following patterns to your left. Okay, so it just basically says so. It's just just try to do that. We will. Uh... <laughs> I'm getting really confused here. Um, we'll jump this one. This one. Yeah, game's over. Uh, <laughs> All right, so yeah, you you basically get the idea. It's basically like I said, if you've uh, ever been to Cracker Barrel here in the United States, it's and I'm sure they've they have restaurants. I'm I'm actually not sure if they have restaurants in other parts of the world, but um, they will give you that uh, like little triangle thing. If I can find one, I'll like like you know put a picture in here, but. Um, it's kind of the same thing, except you can't uh, move diagonally. You can only move vertically and horizontally. Um, so it kind of adds a, a, a bit of a challenge, and you're supposed to get the least number of pegs. So that's actually a pretty cool game they added in here. Um, so next we have Tetris, which I'm sure I'm not even going to have to explain at all. Um, Tetris was one of the most influential games probably ever um, from the guy that uh, actually got it out uh, of the Soviet Union he uh, brought it over here uh, into the US and uh, it was released see well, well actually I mean you, you can see here this is the guy that actually 
uh, uh, designed the game, or no, this is the guy that actually uh, had the um, idea for the concept. This is the guy that actually programmed the game. Both of which uh, were Russian and lived probably over uh, somewhere in the Soviet Union at the time. And basically, if you've ever owned a, uh, a Game Boy in the 1980s or in the uh, late 1980s, early 1990s, it, it would have come with Tetris and you would have probably paid, played Tetris. And it got really popular on that system particularly and it pretty much made its way um, onto a bunch of different other ports. One of them being here on uh, Windows. And so we're just going to play it. I'm not sure if it's going to have the same music, but we'll see. So it is going to have sound. We'll see if it does have the same music. We'll just go into skill. It is going to start us on, on uh, level 6 with 0 rows. So we'll just do new. So there is going to be no music, and this is not the Tetris I'm used to. Oh gosh, okay. Let me, okay, hang on. Let me, let me just restart. That was... So how do you, okay, so that's how you turn. Okay, so I'm, see, I'm used to the one on the Game Boy where if you start pressing the down arrow, it like starts moving it down. It, it, does, it, it doesn't just automatically bring it down to the bottom. Like, see, yeah, I, I'm not used to this version at all. But it's still the same concept. Yeah, I'm not doing that good as I would, <laughs> as I would normally do. Um, Alright, there we go. So we'll see how... Alright, so it plays that sound every time you get a... Uh... I'm just gonna play this for a little bit and we'll see. Alright, so we got another line. Come on, there we go. Um, we'll do this. Oh, it's perfect over here. We will do this one right here. Let's see, this one right here. Alright, so I just, I just lost. That was not, uh... Not very good again. I I'm not really used to this version, but yeah. So this is uh, that is my <laughs> that's that's not very good at all. So we can put in uh, our cool name and our cool quote. So we're gonna put in uh, Michael and we'll put in uh, Team MJD. Um, cause yeah, why not? And we'll click OK. And uh, yeah, so that is that. We'll click on OK, and. Yeah, so that, you can see, that's probably not, there's a lot of uh, lines, or like, I don't know what you call those, like, empty spaces in the middle. So, yeah, that is basically Tetris. Um, I'm sure most of you know what that is. You can probably play it online right now if you want to. It's it, it's probably out there. Uh, sure, we'll save the high score table. Um, next we have Tick, which looks like Tic-Tac-Toe. I'm just going to make sure of that. We'll go back to the entertainment pack. Um... Uh, it's actually uh, called Tick Tactics is uh, the uh, official name according to Wikipedia. And yes, it is a tic-tac-toe variant. However, it looks like it's kind of 3D here. So so actually, yeah, we can make it uh, a normal 3x3, three three, but just for, I guess, more challenging, we'll do 4x4x4 four by four by four and we can... Can we, can we make this like a larger window? I guess not. I guess it's kind of just going to be like this. So... Alright, I guess I'm probably we're gonna probably zoom. Whoa. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Um Yeah, so I guess, I guess I'm just gonna probably zoom in on this. So we'll do options. It's on expert by default. Um random player starts. We'll do let's just new. So I'm guessing this is the uh, uh computer player. So that's me. So I'm gonna try to block him. This is Okay, this is really confusing, because, I mean, he can... Yeah, see, look, so so he can make it like that, and it's supposed to be four in a row. So it's like 3D. Okay, so you, so you have to think, like... Like, like you have to have a... Like a 3D brain to do this. <laughs> um, so see, what he's trying to do is get, like... Block him there. No, he's still there. So, so he can go like this and make it in a diagonal... Like this. And that, this is really difficult. Let's just do, like... An average three by three to make it like super easy. Um, and he won again. So 
so we go like this, we'll block him there, we'll block him there, and he won again. He block him there, block him out there. I know there's a way to always win at uh, tic-tac-toe, but I'm kind of forgetting that method right now. Um, so yeah, uh, basically it's a really challenging tic-tac-toe that you can make it like this, which is really challenging, and you have to just... Again, something to do if you were bored on your job and you had nothing else to do. Um, I guess you could try to beat uh, the, this one computer player at Tic-Tac-Toe, which he always, he's won, I haven't won one round this entire time. Uh, so yeah, that is Tic-Tac-Toe. Uh, let's go back to the folder here. Um, and we also have TP, which is a great name for, for a game. Uh, it's actually called... Um, probably going to pronounce his name completely wrong. It's T-A-I-P-E-I, -E or Tape Pi. Um, it actually was formed uh, into what we now know as um, Microsoft Mahjong, which I'm probably also pronouncing wrong because I usually pronounce every single thing wrong in these videos. But um, So it's probably an early version uh, of, um, what's it called? Mahjong, Microsoft Mahjong. Um, it's an oriental or, or oriental game of skill and chance, version 4 by Dave Norris, copyright 1988, 89, 90. So, uh, yeah, let's just, let's just view what the options are before I actually, uh, confuse myself with that. We'll just move this to the side here. Alright, so overview. Tapai or Tapai is a modern solitaire version of the ancient original game Mahjong. The game begins with an initial configuration of tiles. The option, the object of the game is to remove all the tiles from the playing area. So, so one false move at the beginning could ruin your chances of victory, and while every game has a solution, finding it often takes hours of diligent play. So this is obviously something I'm not going to spend that much time on. Um, tile isn't free. Yeah, I honestly, I'm just going to be honest, I have absolutely no clue how to play Mahjong, so... Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to spend that much time on this, because I don't want to spend hours trying to, like, f like move one tile. Um, yeah, but they they did include this in Windows 7. You basically, I think what you have to do is, like, you're, you're okay, so, so you're supposed to match tiles. So you're supposed to be like this, and just, like, match tiles all the way down to the bottom, and it takes time to do like is like it says if you make one false move it could ruin your chances at winning so so here's a one so this this one down here isn't free apparently so we can't it's gonna keep playing that sound all the time um so let's say there's two here tiles don't match yeah i'm sure there's a lot of people that know how to play this game better than me so if you guys uh <laughs> if you guys want uh I don't know. Oh, actually, yeah, we can just autoplay, which... Actually, okay, let's just see how uh, the actual computer is going to solve this. So, yeah, basically, in a nutshell, kind of, what you're supposed to do is just match the match the tiles and make your way down to the bottom. And, and as it says, um, every game has a solution, but it takes hours of diligent play. So, yeah, you, you can be here for hours doing this, but it's going to probably take a while. So, we're not going to spend that much time on that. And I think this is the last one, last but not least, is Minesweeper, the old classic, which was introduced, this was the first time it was introduced in Windows uh, ever, it, it actually um, originated on OS 2, it was, uh, I believe it was uh, actually programmed by a guy, let me just double check here. Uh, yeah, so this was actually uh, originally designed by uh, a guy by the name of Kurt Johnson. And it was originally designed for OS 2, and it was ported for Microsoft Windows by uh, a guy called, or a guy by the name of Robert Donner. And both these guys were actually working for Microsoft at, um, at the time. Now, if you've never heard of OS 2, it's a whole crazy story. It was basically uh, Microsoft and IBM working together to make one, um, like one big, um, one operating system. It didn't really work out as Microsoft wanted to work on Windows, but yeah, it was basically uh, a Microsoft design program for OS 2, and they brought it to Windows with this. And this was the first time it was on Windows. It later came uh, to Windows 3.1 in 1992, and it actually uh, replaced Reversi in Windows 3. 
so uh, 103 was the last time it uh, that they um, included reversi. So let's just see how this looks in here. Um, it <laughs> it actually looks exactly the same as it did up until Windows XP. Yeah, so they didn't really change it at all. Of course, yeah, they they've probably changed some stuff under the hood, but the overall appearance doesn't really look that much different. Um, they did make a huge change to the game um, in Windows Vista. They actually uh, had um, these people called uh, Orbron Games. They made a whole new version in Windows Vista and Windows 7, and they sadly took it out in Windows 8. But if you're if you're for some reason wondering how to get these games uh, in Windows 8, I do have uh, a video on that, which is actually my most popular video on my channel. So uh, yeah, so that is that. Um, Let's just uh, play some Minesweeper here. We'll see. I've actually not really played this game in a while, so I've kind of forgotten how it, it works. It, it, it's basically when, when there's a 1 here, I think it's um, one of these tiles around here has the mine. So you just basically have to go by that. So you see, yeah, that one had the mine. This one here had the mine. And it's basically if you hit the mine, it's game over. So yeah, that is Minesweeper, and I think that is pretty much everything in the first microsoft entertainment pack and i'm i was playing on um you know putting two of the packs in one video but this uh, whole recording is actually 45 minutes long so far so i think i'm just going to end it off here and i'm going to put those four or those three other packs in just their own separate video as these are probably going to be very long videos just like the microsoft plus videos um so yeah guys um I am going to probably have to do a lot of editing to this one to make it not 45 minutes long, but if you've watched this whole video, I really uh, thank you a lot. Um, I really do appreciate that, that you've you know watched this whole thing. Uh, and as always, guys, uh, if you've liked this video and if you like uh, the, you know this new little mini-series that we're doing, um, be sure to let me know down in the comments as I will be you know working on uh, the other videos as well. Um, and if you would uh, like to see more videos like this, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.